I tried to come and see you today, but you're, it looks like you were busy and you're talking to somebody, so. Yes. And did you see me walking by your office and was... I thought I saw a profile yeah. that I could recognize, but I, could, I didn't want to throw a name. Yeah. Just I'll stop by tomorrow or something if I get a chance there. I'll, I'll catch up with you later. We're live whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay, let's call to order the April 9th, 2024 work session of the city of Tonino. So let's note that all members are present. The first thing our, on our agenda is a review of this, today's agenda. If you guys want to take a minute to look through it and see if there's anything that you want to add or it's a pretty light one today. Yeah, it looks really good to me. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get out of here in like an hour today. Okay. Hour and a half, I well, guess, because we hour, have an hour. Yeah, 15 or 20 minutes, because our people, the volunteers yeah. won't be here till 7.30, I don't think. So, since we asked them to be here, we should probably stay. Yeah, we should stay for them, yeah. <laughs> that would, <laughs> wouldn't be a very good way to recognize our volunteers no, to take no. off before they show up. <laughs> for the Oh, okay. The chamber does that. So, yeah, we do. Uh, the we do. Does a volunteer of the year pin. Yeah, but that's not a pin. Members. Not a pin. No, not it isn't. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it is not. We. Oh. We. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turn the hose off. It's good and to be like Donna Wilson. Be like, uh, Wilson be like is not one a of those. Uh, of the chamber, and she <laughs> was the volunteer of the year. Punching each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter. She yeah, wasn't a member. Yeah. Come on, we're going to have to separate you two here in a minute. <laughs> anything on the agenda that we'll, we'll, if you have anything, you can make, we can also add it during the, when we start our regular meeting. Council priorities, I did actually kind of start working a little bit on the financial, trying to read through ours, and then I actually got on the MRSC website to try to find other places, kind of financial documents to see what they're doing. I think one thing I found with mine were very specific in certain areas, like it says uh, the utility clerk does the payroll. Well, mm -hmm. when you're that specific, it doesn't give you much, you know, if you're really going to follow them to the T, my thing is should, it should be more generalized, saying the clerk treasurer is responsible to make sure somebody's trained and can do the payroll versus just saying the clerk treasurer, I mean, the uh, utility clerk is going to do them. So I think we could resolve some of the things by being more general. Uh, Maybe, I don't know, but, uh, and then on looking at other, uh, what I plan on doing is going through some other cities uh, policies and to see if I pull anything out that looks really good and I'll yeah. work with Jen to hopefully next meeting bring some ideas yeah. for improvements and we can talk about those and yay or nay them and uh, see, see where we get. Uh, does anybody have any other comments on the financial? stuff when do we expect the um it, the final one yeah be ready it's right. it's supposed to be to the state by may right mm -hmm. so I, i'm be hoping this, it would be this, a, time this by the next meeting maybe yeah i would hope it'd be towards the end of april if we uh and uh one thing i did want to just talk i guess financial too is uh I did, forgot to talk to you about this today. Uh, maybe at the next meeting we'll do the first quarter, kind of we'll have kind of the first quarter cleared up so we can Good. kind of see where we stand in the first quarter. So we just have an idea of where we're spending and, and how we're doing this year so far. Uh, so we'll. Now, uh, if we wait to June, we can do a mid-year test. A mid-year too, yeah. yeah. I'm just talking about doing mid a quarter, June. you know, where we're at this quarter and then we'll do one mid-year and yeah. yeah. I think it's good to look at it quarterly, just yeah. so you get get an idea how we're because that would progressing. be sure, sure, yeah. So, I like that idea. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to see specifically from the first quarter besides this kind of uh, where we're at? Uh, good with that. Okay. We have time, so if you think of anybody thinks of anything they want to see or has any questions. Well, five minutes into the work session and we're running out of things to talk about, you guys. <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, well, we'll do the reports, too, so that'll take a little bit of yeah, time. Let's do that. Uh, yeah. That's funny. 
discussion of 420 or in the next council draft agenda. Uh, if anybody has anything now, we can uh, make note of it. But at the end of the meeting, uh, we can also. Uh, well, I think the most important thing would be to to review the quarterly, our yeah. you know, uh, review of the budget for the quarter. That to me would be the most yeah. important thing. For the so we'll make sure that gets on there yeah. so we don't forget it. Uh, Uh, the quarterly report. I don't know if we'll get the. They the, don't have the quarterly report for just in house. I don't know. Not I don't know if we'll have the. Uh, well, I don't even know what to call it. The audit or whatever the you want to call it. The, they, yeah. But, I don't know. I don't know either. But you know, we'll take what we can get and look it over yeah. anyway. I mean, I would think. And I think uh, probably with that one, we maybe we'll have a finance committee meeting yeah. prior to presenting it to the council, so you have a chance to do that. So even if we get it, it may be the meeting okay. after that, so we have time to have the finance committee meet and and look so at it. So our next meeting uh, is on the twenty second, right? Yeah. Uh, the twenty. I'll, I'll, I'll be back for that meeting. But third. I'm it says twenty third on here. But okay. That's correct. I'm going to so, be out of town. I'm leaving the. <laughs> The 19th or the 20th to go up to my sisters. It depends on whether or not, when the doctor can come and neuter those damn dogs. Can you make sure your microphone's on, everyone? Yeah. Thank you. See, now it's the other way around. You're all looking down here, <laughs> and you're not. <laughs> Something that we might want to start looking at is the new environmental yeah. restrictions that we're going to be facing. It's going to be a long time type thing. But uh, we, the, uh, I believe I heard this correctly, that people in the planning commissions throughout the state are going to get a little bit more time to set up the, their uh, comprehensive, the comprehensive yeah, plan. Yeah, I've already reported that. Yeah. yeah. I think until that. December 31st now. Okay, yeah, but the problem that I see with it is that, and I'm going to talk to uh, the TRPC about that actually tomorrow. Uh, on, on a side note type deal, we, we don't have any benchmarks. We don't have a starting line. For example, you look at Olympia and you look here. We don't have the same environmental problems that Olympia has. Olympia doesn't have the same environmental problems that Seattle has, so on and so forth. So what are the benchmarks that we're going to be forced to, to follow? And how, when, when is it all going to start? And what are going to be the penalties if we can't meet those benchmarks? Uh, we do have a planning person here, so uh, he's going to does this report. I think we talked a little. It's the sustainability. Is that what you're? Because there's a new whole new section we have to do on sustainability. Is that kind of what oh, you're yeah. talking about? So I. I the pl on the planning commission, they added a section where we have to address sustainability in our comprehensive plan. Yeah. And so I think they talked about it. So maybe if you remember the, any specifics about it, you can address it when you do your report and kind of just tell them what to, because they have talked about this. And I think there's some state guidelines to help help uh, communities get but through see, this. That, because but again, that's, that's, where I, that's where I see the problem. You're, they're coming from what little I've been able to gather so far, it's a one size fits all when it doesn't even come close to being appropriate for us. Okay. Well, okay. We'll do it in his report here soon. Okay. So we'll uh, ask for a second. If there's, uh, at the end of the meeting tonight, we'll make sure there's nothing else we want to add to the agenda for next meeting. Okay. Uh, let's do reports. Uh, we may not have a lot of people here, so we'll go back. If there's a George. Oh, there's a George. I don't know if everybody here knows it, but George Sharp has is getting a kidney. Yes. April twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Yes. So exciting. Hooray for George and his yes. kidney. You're not, you're not kidding. Makes me emotional. I can't even talk about it. Okay. George, Sonino Chamber Lunch Forum is Wednesday, April 17th from at noon at the Sandstone Cafe. The guest speaker will be Aslan Mead. Topic self, Southwest Washington Agriculture Business and Innovation Park. Study is Friday, April 19th at 8 a.m. at the Yelm Community Center. Guest speaker new to Port of Olympia is the Executive Director, Alan Smith. No Thurston Economic Development Council report from George. <laughs> is Jessica, sure, Jessica going to be here later, do you know? Okay. Good night. 
So I will just uh, just have things to share for her. Do you? If you want. Well, well, she's, next. <laughs> she's next. She's so. next. Yeah. You might as well just stay up there for the whole. Uh, you do everybody's reports. Report. Um, just a reminder: tomorrow night at 5 p.m. here in the council chambers will be uh, the public input for the park master plan. So, help spread the word on that. Okay. Do you have anything and for the arch report? Arch. Arch commission. Yeah. Well, we're doing a. What are we doing? Sometime we're doing something. <laughs> arch commission is at the next meeting. What are we doing? Sometime we're doing something. Yeah, we're doing something. A second, let me think. Let me find my calendar here. Uh, Arch Commission, we're going to tour something. Oh, we're gonna look where the library, where the um, mural is gonna mural. go on the library, yeah. and what, something, some other one too. Is yeah, just the library. Is that the baseball field? At the ball fields. Yeah, we're gonna walk yeah. up there. Yeah, at four o'clock on. The 16th, which is a week from today. Okay. Are you meeting someplace before you go over there? Or are you just uh, going to meet at the, the library? Well, oh, it's just going to be right here. So yeah, okay. So anybody interested, meet at the library if you want to find out what they're talking about yeah. uh, as far as the mural. Day, uh, Dan, that'd be a good thing <laughs> for you to go to this to see. What time is it? Four, four to five p.m. on Tuesday. I think they're meeting at the library. BCB, I don't think we'll put no. that just in case. Uh, South Thurston Fire, you want to do a report and you can get out of here quickly and go home. You got to come back. Oh, that's right. You were. There we are. Uh, so the fire department, we did our push-in uh, last weekend there of March, and that was a nice small event, but it went well for what we did for the first time. Um, we were able to finally get the vehicles pushed back over the little hump of the sidewalk, so that was a little burden, but we got it figured out. Um, our new ambulance, the refurbished new ambulance, should be here at the end of next week if everything goes right with Braun Northwest. and. Um, then we're kind of fulfilled with that side of the bond of getting all our apparatus up to date, what we said we were going to do with our bond. Um, so that part is a check mark, and now we're still working through areas on um, land and where we're going to put a fire station at and what that looks like still. So more to come on that side later. Uh, we have two of our newer full timers will be done with the State Fire Academy at the end of next week, and they'll be put on the shift and start working for us right away. Uh, we have four to six new volunteers that will be going to our next volunteer academy starting up here. Uh, we're hoping at the end of August, um, October, September time frame. And uh, by that time we should have four new EMTs uh, with a couple different volunteers that have signed up and they'll be finishing their EMT program. So we're getting numbers up that way. Um, some of the areas of concern we're getting into wildland season and getting ready for all those kind of things so we're looking at our wildland urban interface issues and concerns that we have and most of our tonino area thurston county you know the fire district side of that isn't too shabby compared to the elm prairie and the west thurston prairie but we're caught in the middle of those kind of things and uh, we had that fire up off a of, off at lake which is in district six area but it caused uh, an influx and then the school was wanting to open their doors for people to go and stage up for the community of needed so we're trying to work on those things ahead of time this year so we have a plan in place and the superintendent knows who to call working with the emergency management as we all had a meeting with them um, probably about a month ago now it seems like and we're going to try to get a second phase of that so we can keep growing with that understanding of what emergency management means to us in Tonino and how we all have a part of playing with that. So we'll take that to the next level at the next meeting is what we're hoping to gain from that side of things. Um, so that's pretty much us in a nutshell at this time, unless you guys have questions on anything. Yes, I Linda. have one. Yeah. <laughs> have you started, perhaps started the process of trying to get some credits to have some gophers moved from, you know, you're, you're, you're grinning and I know, but I know that you can do that. I know it might take time, but you know that the, the doc, what's his name, Doctor Who's place is, is yeah. yes, not Edwards, Barnett, uh, Barnett's Barnett, place. Yeah. yeah, that's the ideal spot for for the fire station. 
So right now, I can say that there are no credits available to us. No one wants to sell their credits that they have in okay. their pockets. We've asked, we've looked into that side okay. of things. Okay. Um, because that would be nice, right? The, the one flaw in this system um, is that Tanina wasn't included with the Thurston County piece. We didn't look at that piece or when we were asked about it, we said no as the city because it wasn't gonna affect a big population. No. And that, that's my, what I've been told by people above my education level on that matter. And so we can't buy our way out of it like the rest of Thurston County can now, right? And so if we could have, it would have cost us $50,000 and we could have been building a station there, right? But, but I can't because it's in the city limits right now. And so we're looking at some different avenues at some different property that um, may not have the same issues. We still have to do some gopher stuff, but it might not be as big a deal on one piece of it. So we're looking at that, but that could still take up to two year process. And we're pushing up against our requirement by law on our bond usage. Mm -hmm. And we have to have the majority of that um, paid down, like 85% of it at, by March of 2025. And that's our hurdle right now. So we're hoping that maybe if we got something under contract that would alleviate that issue, knowing that it's gonna happen, and then the auditor's office wouldn't hurt us. But the other flaw to this is if we don't do this by that certain time frame, um, I believe it's the IRS can get involved and then we start getting fined for any interest that's made on that. And I really don't wanna go down <laughs> that road. No, you can't go down that road. With, with the IRS, let alone the community. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so that's what we're dealing with. So we got plan A, plan B, and plan C in the works. And it's just, it's probably the worst place I've ever been as a chief yet, chief officer dealing with something. You got $8 million sitting there ready to go and you can't do anything with it. Um, who would have thought? You know, and so I put it up to our commissioners that we may have to look at eminent domain or some of these other things that we haven't wanted to yet but we're getting pushed into the corner where we might have to actually look at that that option okay yeah All any, right. any other questions my question. yeah anytime any other questions for the fire department no. all right thank okay. you i'll try to catch up with you sometime this week or early next week uh, nothing this pressing but probably thursday or friday might be best okay That's a good okay good luck with that Library, nobody here, I don't believe. Museum, uh, not anything from the museum. museum. Yeah. Uh, Tonino Community Service Center, uh, don't see anybody from there. Uh, I did stop by today and they just talked to her a little bit about how things are going and they're serving 90 to 100 families a week now at the, out of the Community Service well, Center. It uh, seems like demand is still growing, you know, even though they say oh, the economy is doing well. I think a lot of people are still struggling with well, food well, and price gas prices yeah. and stuff that are, you yeah. know, that yeah. are really yeah. hitting people. So uh, we're very lucky to have them to help uh, some yeah. members in our community that, uh, that need the help. Committees, commission, civil service commission. Facade improvement no grant. Report. Finance committee did not no meet. Report. No. Planning Commission. There you there go. We go. Here's your chance to. Okay. Well, good evening. Um, all right. So, the uh, Planning Commission met uh, last month, and we got a. Uh, the planners brought a new kind of requirement that the uh, Thurston Regional Planning Council is giving to us, which is to plan for a, the state not from well us. yeah so the state mandated and then trpc has, to. Uh, has mm -hmm. to say you know you have you have to increase housing in the area by x amount of houses or whatever so um what they gave us was the need to plan for an additional 520 units um in tonino so um have you had any pushback on that number because we did as far as planning for that many yeah no we just kind of looked at it and we're like okay let's okay. let's let's try to find out so how we can people, do this the, the people that were giving us pushback on it don't seem to understand that 
yes, it's a requirement for, from the state, but there's no penalties if that part of it is not met. Because here in Tanana, I think we've got nine buildable lots left, mm -hmm. uh, unless we start growing, you know, growing our UGA boundaries again. So, just want to see if if that part got any pushback. Yeah. No. Um, so let's see. So the the way we can do that is to either the way we can plan for all of those units, if we want to do this, is to expand the UGA or just to increase density or a combination of both. Um, so most of the housing needs that we need to plan for ended up being in the, um, in the greater, or 80% of the, uh, what is it, the area median income. So 80% of the area median income or above. So this is predominantly single family homes um, for that income bracket. Um, so that was generally the meeting. We didn't come out with any um, decisions simply because we didn't have enough information at the time and we asked the planners to give us a little bit more, um, a little bit more information on a couple of different options um, that we liked the idea of better. So we'll know more at the next planning commission meeting. Um, and I should note that uh, the planning commission meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow is canceled um, and may be rescheduled later in the month. Um, and then I was going to address the environmental planning for, or the environmental section of the comp plan. Well, before you go in there, okay. uh, when you're looking at the housing, mm -hmm. how many did you say, 500 what? About 520 okay. units. Are you looking at power and water? Never we have not talked about it? that yet, no. Okay, because right now uh, it's, it took Lacey 20 some odd years to get you know, water specifically for the Hawks Prairie area. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're starting to run out of actual power. When they give, when PSC gave us a presentation, their presentation was on the transmission. That's fine, you can transmit very well. The problem wasn't transmission, it was generation. Where we're getting power for all those houses, and that's just here. That's not the rest of Thurston County. Mm -hmm. And where we're getting the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's definitely something that needs to look into, the sewer yep. as well. Um, that also needs uh, to be kind of sewer is our, is our problem. Yeah, that that part is being mandated by the state. Yeah. So, two different issues. Okay. Okay. So, um, the environmental requirements of the comp plan. So, I asked some some specific questions about this portion because I was also a little bit touch and go about what exactly they were requiring. So we have to address, and I'm, I'm kind of still vague in my knowledge of this, but we have to address some specific areas that the state mandates we have a plan for. There is no specific requirement on how we have to address those. So it's a big gray area in how we go about that. Um, and I said, so if we submit a plan, is anybody going to second guess? Is anybody gonna come and double check what we're doing? And essentially, the planner came back and was like, probably not. Well, so see, here's, here's the, the back side of that part. That, that same question was asked years and years ago when, when we were going through this at one time. And future-wise, which is a group in, in threat that throughout the state that looks at UGAs and all that kind of good stuff and, and all the different planning came in and sued Thurston County and a whole lot of other counties on their Growth Management Act, and we all had to reduce our growth management, uh, our UGA, uh, because we could provide the water and the power for it. So that okay. gray area will come back and bite us if we're not trying to clear that up. Sure. Sure. That's what I got. That's it. Appreciate it. Any right. other questions for, for him? Appreciate you coming and yeah. sharing with us. Thank oh, you. I had a question. Somebody had asked me, do you have, do you know when you're going to talk about zoning, do you have a schedule? Do you, uh, they ask if when we would be talking about that. If not, I, I'll just keep watching and try I'd, to see when it comes up and let them know. But yeah, I, I don't have any information on that yet. Okay. No. What kind of questions on zoning? Uh, they, they just had a piece of property that they were uh, wanted some changes in their zoning, and so they wanted to attend the meeting when they were talking about it. Uh, I think it's. It's part of the comp plan update. Is zoning is one of the one of the things that they'll be uh, talking about. So somebody just has some property that they 
we're curious about the zoning on what it is now and if there's any uh, movement to change it maybe so okay. I just told him I'd let him I'd check with you and yeah. let him know okay. hey since you're here we skipped you over you if you want to do a report you're on the you're on walk in the door and take a mic <laughs> puts you right on the spot Yeah, I can take it. And there are a couple extra if anybody would like one. I'm Linda McKinney, uh, Tonino Timberland Library Manager. And um, uh, good evening, everybody. I put together today some numbers for you just to let you see what the library, how the library is serving um, our community. And basically, I compared February of 2023 with February of this year. February only because um, some of our March statistics aren't up on the website yet, so I didn't wanna you know, muddy the waters with some from February, some from March. So the, um, the good news is that in almost every aspect, our library is being used more. So we have more, um, <clears throat> unique individual card holders coming into the library than we did um, in February last year. Um, the um, digital, I, uh, the sorry, looking at this, <laughs> both physical and digital checkouts went up um, over the last, uh, compared to this month last year. And the where we surprisingly, to me, found, see the most growth is in the um, number of computer sessions um, at the, um, using the library's computers because we do see so many people with the smartphones or with the laptops, you know, using those in the library. But, you know, that's more than double the number of people who used our computers uh, last year in February. We have noticed that they've been busier lately. Of course, this is April. But um, I think that that's been a trend. I'm not really sure why, but I, I say, great. I'm glad people are coming in and using whatever resources um, they uh, need to use. Um, and then I thought it was just interesting, the breakdown of um, the different types of items that are borrowed um, by age group that the item is intended for. Mm -hmm. So just because um, the easy items, the picture books, um, uh, are intended for preschoolers doesn't mean that only preschoolers are checking them out. I, for one, check out a lot for story time, but uh, it's just kind of an interesting way to see um, what in our collection is used the most. And the only thing I see here is that we need to get teens checking out more items in the library mm -hmm. <laughs> because they went down from last year. But um, this was actually uh, physical items, so they very well could be using more digital items. I didn't do the breakdown like that. But I just thought it would be interesting, and I think periodically through the year, maybe once a quarter or something, I'll do another one, and you can just kind of see what's happening at the library besides the programs that I'm you know, telling you about, which I didn't bring any show and tell today, but we are having some programs coming up. I think the one that I'm most excited about is this, um, uh, the 12th, which is Friday, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, fr Friday afternoon. Uh, we're having Mr. Twister, the balloon, Twister come and he's doing a workshop for our elementary school kids. Oh, so at 3.30 on Friday, um, I'm assuming it's gonna be a little bit crazy in the library, yeah. but in a very good way. <laughs> so um, that, and then on Saturday, we're having an intergenerational all ages preschool through adults, butterfly art. So butterflies in different forms. No actual butterflies have been harmed for this program. <laughs> <laughs> and, and next Thursday, Crafternoon, um, <coughs> for our adults will be making felt banners. So, pretty exciting. Anyway, any questions for me or? No. It sounds like we're gonna be over there. Uh, when did you say they're gonna? Oh, I think on the, on the 16th. The we're gonna be over there looking Arch at, the, talking about the mural yes, project. Yes, the mural meeting, the mural. yes. I think that will be very uh, yeah. interesting. I'm excited to hear about that. It just reminded me, because I was thinking, oh no, it's the 18th. Um, 18th, is Jessica here? No, okay, so I'm not stealing her thunder. The 18th, seven o'clock, Corey House, um, the uh, program this month that we're collaborating on is um, Thurston County in World War I. So hopefully you can join Thurston us there. Thurston County what? Mm -hmm. Thurston County in World War I. Oh yes, yes, I did yeah. see that. So I think that looks pretty interesting. Jeff, I owe you a phone call. Okay. 
<laughs> so I've been digging out after my vacation. But anyway, I'm always at, I'm not always at the library. Most typically I'm at the library. Find me there, shoot me an email. It's on the website if you guys need me. But thank you for listening. Thank you. Any, any questions? Okay. Thanks, Thanks so much. Oh, thank you for the. Uh, oh, and thank you for the. Yeah, the card. Yeah. Thank yeah. Thank you. Uh, Public Safety Committee, any meeting? Is that us? Yeah. No. Not no. Yet. <laughs> That's you. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hold of the chief either at the end of this week or early next week to get some set up. Okay. Public Works Committee. Nothing. No. Okay. Next month is our meeting. Okay, staff reports. Uh, I guess we did get uh, something from the chief. Mm -hmm. Chief, do we? Yeah. Um, chief of Police, the Sergeant Lee and Officer McClelland staff the Tenino Police Department booth at the Tenino High School Career Fair that had numerous students with an interest in the career in law enforcement. There is an ongoing rape investigation, all evidence sent to Washington State Patrol Lab for processing. Once we receive the findings, the investigation will continue. Officer McClelland, do you need more chairs? Let me put out some more chairs. There, there are more chairs over here if you guys need. Um, Officer McClellan successfully processed two DUI cases. One was suspected alcohol and the other was suspected alcohol and drugs. A civil hearing regarding the police department and civil citizens dog was dismissed by a Thurston County judge. Officer Johnson received positive feedback from a citizen with assisting an elderly stranded motorist. Thank you. Uh, Troy, he doesn't have anything. Uh, I can just say they've been working on the pool was pretty much their main focus still was trying to get that that completed and going. We did have a call or we did make some contact with uh, Department of Health about the whole bathroom issue. Uh, they sent us a letter back basically outlining what we need to do to just to make sure uh, what we need. The concern is at least what I read in the letter was that uh, portable uh, bathrooms don't provide the same sanitary uh, conditions that a regular bathroom does so that can be oh, transmitted yes. into the pool <laughs> so anyway we're, we'll work with the uh, Department of Health and make sure we get back on uh, yeah get do what we can to get that uh, fig all figured out uh, city planner I think uh, the only thing I really know about on the city planner is just continuing to do the uh, update of our comprehensive plan uh, code enforcement building inspector he's not here yet <clears throat> I will mention uh, also today we talked with them about uh, having a fire marshal and that's what I was going to talk to you one of the things I was going to talk to you about we do not have a fire marshal uh, in town we haven't for some time and uh, a citizen wrote a complaint about a facility in our town that he was a, I think a prior firefighter and kind of knew some of the code stuff and since sent up some information what he saw and uh, I think it just kind of brings up the question if something happens and we've noted that there's issues and haven't dealt with it you know is the city liable for not and so we it's one of the things we really need to get figure out how we're going to provide fire marshal services for the city and uh, to make sure our buildings are safe and meeting the fire codes and also for new construction stuff uh, you know so anyway, we're going to be working on that and seeing where we can, uh, what we can do with that. God bless you. Sure. You had a question? No. He sneezed. I said God bless you. Oh, okay. I thought you said I have a question. That's what I thought you said too. <laughs> Park specialist, she's off today. She's not coming in today. So uh, I, I think she talked about last time we did walk up at the property just to kind of check it out. Yeah. And it, it'll be a beautiful... Uh, uh, yeah. Place that we when we get it going, That's it's, nice. it's amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, city attorney, no report. Clerk, treasurer. Um, we had a pool walkthrough, as Dave said, um, with an architect regarding the restrooms and the future of them. So that was exciting to brainstorm all that. Um, more to come on that, and also. Um, the park master plan proposal will be shown tomorrow night so hopefully everyone can attend and see that um, we had a meeting about Oregon Trail days and possibly moving the parade staging area we will be looking into that um, with the DOT approval 
We had a big purchase and sale agreement signing here at City Hall last week uh, with the Park Foundation as well as Norseman Timber Company. So all of that has been sent to escrow and it is in the process. So very soon that will be signed over to the city. Um, working on grant reimbursements and quarterly reports and that's all. And that anybody that's interested, the uh, park master plan, there's going to be a public comments tomorrow. And like she said, it's at five o'clock here. So anybody that's interested in the park master plan, five o'clock tomorrow, they'll they'll have that public. That survey that was floating around Facebook for a long time is also going to have all the results to that. So yeah. yeah. it's a great opportunity for the public to have input on we where should, our park goes. We should find that poll with poll the council to see if anybody's going. Because only two can. Three's quorum. So I'm, I'm not going. Crap. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about going. Yeah. Sounds like you can go. Okay. We're good. Yeah. I'll probably go too. I told her I'd be there. So, but I don't count as far you as the count. count. Yeah, as the quorum. So. I can go. Yeah. Okay, good. If they need me to. Yeah. They need to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have a march here. <laughs> Okay, I'll do my report, and I don't have a lot. I'm a new grandpa, so I've been spending a little time oh, with the yeah, yeah, right. Little, uh, yeah. Your first, first time mayor. grandpa. There yeah. goes the Forget the other. <laughs> I told my wife, I'm not going to get too involved, oh, and yeah, I'm going to get yeah, too involved. Right. Sure. Yeah, oh, that sure. didn't work very good. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I did attend the fire department push-in, which is a, a fun thing. I, and I didn't really even know the history for people that don't know. Back in the days when they had wagons, when, or when they had horse-drawn apparatus, when they got back, they had detached the horses, apparently, and they would push the apparatus back into the bay. So that's how this whole push-in thing got started. And, uh, I, yeah, but those wagons weren't quite as that, heavy yes. as some of those. <laughs> uh, I was, I was, since we got time, I was laughing because we did this when I was working at Lacey, and I was inside the, you know, steering it in the bay, and it's pretty close. So you, you get kind of nervous as you're going through the doors, and I, they were pushing, and I hit the brakes because I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they were all out there like, what are you doing? <laughs> but uh, I think we, somebody did that a little on one of ours, too, on the way in. Uh, but anyway, it was, it was a fun ceremony, and uh, good to it, see it that new apparatus. So we ate that little lip that went like yeah. this, and it wasn't going anymore. <laughs> Had to get a run at it. That's uh, I, they talked about the Norseman Agreement. That was signed, so that was a great th thing. And I want to thank Jessica and really all the staff, but Jessica put so much work yeah, into making that happen. Really and, but all our staff really worked, had a piece of that. So I appreciate everybody's efforts on uh, getting that whole project done and getting, getting the paperwork done. Uh, the fire marshal I talked about already. Uh, so we're looking at a couple things. Uh, do we contract with somebody? Or do we kind of work in a mutual agreement with some other city that has a fire marshal? So we're going to be looking into like three options we've kind of identified with our with our planning or with our. Uh, I'm wondering if it could group Rainier, Yakota, and Timmy. See, that's what I'm thinking. Three cities together. So yeah, that's we're, we're, we're next meeting. There should have a report that kind of says. Uh, Before what, you go through all that trouble, you might want to find out. What what could happen? Because we haven't had a fire marshal since I've been here. Yes, well, we had Dan Mahoney yeah. until he left. Dan Mahoney from the fire department was our fire marshal. Yeah. He went around and did some inspection, but, but he, he was the fire he, marshal. He, he, <laughs> never mind. But in any event, we haven't had one for a very long time. Yeah. Well, we need one. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'll, uh, next meeting I will bring. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we options we have, and I think there's kind of some short-term stuff we need because we have some big projects going on that were mentioned that we need to get somebody that can do, like out at the Ag Park. There were some issues with the sprinkler system out there, possibly the piping size. Oh, I think I it got resolved, but that's kind of what a fire marshal may have caught. If, but so we have some immediate issues that if we can get somebody that can, you know. Yeah service like just as we need somebody we just call them and say can you do it but then we need to look at the I'm longer surprised that the, the person that, that the, the complaint that was turned in that they aren't on because like i said joyce from the shop they just come in she's on a regular contract mm -hmm. with them to come in and check out yeah. fire extinguishers and i think most places are and probably changed hands and some other things but uh, that's linda that's only if you want to do it right? that's what i mean yeah. that's what I, no no i don't I know it's not automatic, but yeah. that's, yeah. well, you know Joyce, she wanted it oh, yeah. because she forgets, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people even know. I, I mean, if I was just a lay person, I wouldn't even know they're supposed to be serviced every, you know, every year, really. But uh, so it's, a, it's an education thing, too, that people just don't yeah. uh, just don't realize that they have to have those service. And, you know, they're fairly new to that. So anyway, we'll get it. We'll get those figured out and give some least short term options and longer term options. Uh, I did want to mention, uh, we talked about this a little bit uh, in the past, uh, the state is working on that biodigester grant, that, and we were kind of asked if we wanted to host a site out at our wastewater treatment plant that was presented to the federal government, uh, and we will hear probably this summer whether we are chosen to uh, get funding for that. I also just, uh, I talked about this too, the food bank solar system to help uh, extend the use of the generator. I just submitted that grant on Monday. I don't know uh, exactly when uh, they expect to announce that, but this is a, as a baseline. It, right now that generator could run for like six days with the tanks they have. If we have some solar there to help offset it, it could run up to 22 days. So if there's a bigger disaster, it could really extend the time that that food warehouse can, can be used. So uh, we'll see what happens with that one. Uh, hopefully we'll. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up today, we had a, a staff meeting. Uh, the farmer's market asked if we could, uh, in front of the library there, there's a space about this wide where there's grass. Yeah, if you look, the, if you look from, the, this street yes, up here, down. the first up to the alley, it's that, that spot, there's a there curb and then a curb and there's a spot about, oh, that wide. Yeah. And the, to, the farmer's market pay, put cement in there and paved that. It's a real tripping hazard. Yeah, it is. But from the alley to the end of the block and by the library, it's still open. It's still a trench in there and it make, it's a, uh, could be yeah, it could, so, yeah, people do walk a lot through there, yeah. too. So they had asked, if they said they would buy the materials right. if we could do the work. Uh, Public Works is kind of a little bit stressed trying to get this yeah. pool done. So they, I asked today, you know, do you have time to do it? And they said, well, we maybe can, but I said, if we can get some volunteers. I, I don't think pouring the concrete is a super hard thing because it's just a narrow, it's not going to have any load on it. It's I not. I think it'd be the, uh, the biggest part of it would be the digging, digging out the, digging it out and, yeah. and putting sand and stuff or whatever you need. So if anybody on council has any ideas of uh, maybe getting a volunteer group together, I think if, you know, one day if we had a few people, you could get that thing dug out. Sure. And, and I think it would be a very simple thing to fill it in. Do that with first. The, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm saying, yeah. Since we're talking about volunteer, so we're volunteer, talking about volunteers here. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about volunteers, so yeah, we would really appreciate any volunteers that wanted to uh, <laughs> to do that work. But if we don't, we'll try to get we'll try to get the uh, public works to. Uh, and we can probably get a little help from Public Works, maybe loosening up the soil or, you know, doing some basic stuff. I just but think that that the farmer's market doesn't ask an awful lot. No. You know, and they, they bring a lot of business to downtown for yeah. all of the businesses. And, and I think that it's just something that would be nice. If it would be do. nice to get that done, yeah. And they're going to, uh, I haven't asked Troy, but they asked to have the street swept before they opened up. So we'll right. make sure we run the street sweeper through there and get it nice and clean for them. So do uh, I understand that, that uh, Farmer's Market is willing to buy the material. concrete? Yeah. And they're just looking for some. And I don't even know if it has to be reinforced or any. I think uh, it's just going to be a. Yeah. They're know. volunteers, but they're scattered volunteer. You know, they're, it's, their people are scattered. They're not, they're not just from Tonino or, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't think it'd be, like I said, a huge job, but if, if anybody has any ideas on maybe getting a little volunteer group, that would be much appreciated by maybe, me. Yeah, and take that on, Dave. You I, wanna, I, yeah. You wanna see if you can find somebody and you can just talk to me and uh, yep. like I said, we just wanna try to get it done by May. You can talk to Forrest. Yeah, Forrest, yeah. He'll help you, seriously. Uh, the farmer, farmer's market opens in early May, so, uh, or mid-May, I think, so if we have uh, a- no, 4th of May. 4th of Open May, yeah. yeah. Weeks. So a couple of weeks, yeah. two to three weeks, if if we can. Uh, I think that's all I had okay. for this one. Uh, liaisons, uh, be that. Uh, there's no report. Solid Waste Advisory Board. Sounds like you did have a meeting. <laughs> Solid Waste. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't a full meeting. 
um, or what they called an official meeting because there wasn't a quorum. Oh, okay. A lot of people were on vacation because of spring oh, break. Oh, spring break, yeah. yeah. But they did have a presentation um, by Kevin Jensen from the Agricultural Program, and he talked about the, their big problem with um, carcasses and uh, animal waste from. Jen, um, is there a shade on that? Button? From um, yeah. Yeah. slaughterhouse and type we'll thing. <laughs> Everybody's like yeah. it. It there's just no place locally to do it. Right. And they're not taking it at their state county anymore. You just and they're looking to. There we um, go. They're looking to try and find a place to compost, but they haven't figured out how much acreage they need, and they don't know how long it takes. Well, tell them to talk to me because that's exactly what the biodigester is for. Animal carcasses yeah, are very nutrient rich, and they work great. A, if any of the local systems put in a digester, they could deal with it. Yeah. That's exactly why we were looking at, one of the exact reasons why we were looking at that digester because uh, animal uh, waste is very high in nutrients and the county actually did a big study several years ago about dairy waste also is a big, uh, and that it's another thing they have a problem yeah. where to get rid of it. Right. You know, they're, yeah, they're trucking it to Eastern Washington or someplace to spread yeah, on property. Right now he says, it's, and, and that it's, it's not only from slaughterhouses, but animals that have been hit on the road. Right. Yeah. So I will, uh, I'll mention, I'll uh, try to make contact just to let them know we're, you know, possibly we'll have something here locally that can help with that, you know, when we find oh. out, but uh, okay. yeah, that's great. Solid Waste Advisory Board. You shared it, that was it. Whoops, I'm sorry, I forgot to mark it off. <laughs> TCOM 911, I don't think, it's Tonino School Board. Forest, yeah, uh, spring old. sports is going right now. Tanano's baseball team's ranked second in the state in RPI. And then um, and softball has a couple wins, too. And then this Saturday, there's a pulled pork, benef uh, pulled pork dinner at the Eagles at 5 o'clock, benefiting the Tanano Band Boosters. So it's $15 a plate. Unless you're a kid, it's $10. So. That was a little guy like me. Forrest, do you have anything to ask since you're, since you're here? Good. Sounds good? That was good enough? <laughs> don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but... <laughs> oh, I don't. That's okay. It's okay to put him on the spot. <laughs> TRPC? Uh, the conversation that I had with... The, I don't... Sorry, I don't remember your name. Adam. Adam. That we had back and forth. That was pretty much the discussion that we had with, with TRPC. Also, a uh, report on buildable lands for industrial... Mm, I saw that today. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's getting. It really hasn't changed since the first time about 15 years ago that I saw that report. We've got a lot of our industrial lands further inland off the I-5 corridor, so that makes it a little bit tough, and may have to start looking at uh, uh, rezoning that to get the businesses to come down here, so it's a little bit closer to I-5, which is a major hurdle. Also. Uh, the infrastructure and a lot of the, the places that we could put in uh, could put industry is not even close. They would to have sewer stuff. and yeah, sewer, that kind of thing. water, yeah. power, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so that was just uh, that was just the uh, basically what we spoke about. Yeah. And I think one of the things I saw when I was reading it that right now it says you have to be within a certain distance of the highway, like within five, mi one, five miles of the highway to build an industrial thing. And so I that's. I don't remember the exact it was, number. Yeah, but somewhere that's it, fairly it, close to I 5. It has to be close enough to I 5 because if, you, if you're not, it, it has all kinds of repercussions. Right, the, traffic. The biggest and, one is that the, the business may not want to because it's too far away and the transportation costs are getting up. And what, what would drive that trans transportation course getting up is the size of our roads. They're not big enough all the time, and we don't have enough enough roads to take care of it the further out that it goes. You know, it's, it's like I said, it hasn't really changed much since the first time I saw this type of report. 
Okay. Uh, thanks, Jen. She just sent me a note about uh, we, there's a drug take, uh, for be that, there's a drug take back at Tonino Police Department April 27th. So if you have uh, medicines you want to get rid of instead of throwing it down the toilet, which does have impacts, uh, they'll be on the 27th at Tonino Police Department, uh, a drug take back uh, event. So I'll just, thank you, Jen. Mm -hmm. TPB, Transportation Policy Board? That's tomorrow morning. Okay. 7.30. Thurston County Commissioners, I haven't heard anything. I don't think there's anything legislative, well, not this, I nothing new. <laughs> They're closed. They're closed for the, for the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah. Okay, that's our reports. Uh, we got 10 minutes before our regular meeting and we'll get, people are here for the volunteer thing. We'll try to get you, get you on the agenda quickly and uh, so you don't have to sit through the whole meeting if you don't want to. So 10 minutes, we'll be back on the agenda. Are back on. Yeah, you know they love to sit through the meeting. Yeah, don't you? I can tell they're so all so you excited. Bet. <laughs> you are you sure this is for the volunteer, <laughs> not for Tenniel's annual office supply expenditure report? That yeah, you know. <laughs> maybe you never know. So you know what that is as far as the, like 50% of your total calls or is it kind of, oh, so you got a lot, it's a lot less than 50%. Yes. Yeah, I thought for some reason a long time ago when I looked at it, it said 50%. It used to be, but then again, you have a member that a good chunk right now, about a good chunk, a couple hundred, by the end of the year, we have a few that is that annual program. Oh, so that makes a big difference. It does. Yeah. So I have to be able to figure out a way to take no, that out. Right. But, but yeah, it still gives you an idea, though. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. It does. It does. It does. Just, just yeah. I hand you the box. Yeah, I just want to show you the box. Thanks. I was on the back side of the Okay. That's okay. All right. But what I have to do is I can't wait for these type of shoes to work because the top. What are we going to do with that yellow building, the old hotel over there? You got any ideas well, about I, what a good thing to do? I, I wish I, I, I just wish I wish I had some really fun. That could be a cool place, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I just wonder what kind of business is going to get put in there. Yeah, that's what I wonder too. Yeah. Um, but I, I've got, got to get a meeting. So you know, so hard getting everybody together. Oh, yeah. and, and, so that we can vote on whether or not we will uh, I'll do the allow the her to use that as a separate building. building. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Have you been upstairs in there? Is there no, I'm not. And I've got to get over to Casey because she told me. Well, well, I'd to see what it's like yeah. up there. Well, because that was a hotel room at one point, wasn't it? It's a hotel yeah. room. She gets a hotel Tell me if you know, I'd be interested. So. I've been in the bottom part. It used to be here when it was the hardware store. Right. That was right. It was a fast room. Yeah. But I know I've never been upstairs. And usually, yeah. if, if somebody like to that, say somebody it's says, is it, is it true the story is that some people think it's haunted from the past? Could be. Never can. It could be. Uh, I think they say that about the Minimum Town. Well, I know they say it's true. Talk about luck. Did you know? But, uh, Colleen's grandfather's so feed store, the first mayor of tonight, mm -hmm. was the American cheater in the very next building where my section is. Because it's 336 and a half. That was the feed store. Mm -hmm. and you walk, so in that section, I was going to say, I was going to say, watch your back, where the back room is. Jim, little Jess, me. You can see the, the doors. So then they drop inside. Mm -hmm. And the feed store, the shed, was over 65. Medicare still at 65, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I thought it was. So I've got Medicare and Medicaid just picking up the, the second half of that. So I after a meeting today, uh, they talk about the uh, food vendors uh, over there. Yeah. Remember I was talking about they wanted to put in that 50 amp. I don't know if she said anything yeah, to you. But, uh, they they wanted to block the, the, uh, the tier yeah. handicap yeah. spots to allow yeah. vendors in the parking yeah. area over there, right where you drive in the parking area. No. I mean, and I didn't think about that whole area was really the county. That whole parking lot is county property. I mean, we've always used it. We've never really asked for permission to put anything in there. I think that somehow it was. Yeah, I think so. Because I do the owner's. But you have to have the hand. 
Yeah. And I said you can. But here's the funny part. It's over on the thing. Yeah. So I told her that uh, I didn't think we, you know, because I, I think we did it last year, but I don't think anybody should get an announcement. I said you can. I think technically they could be in big trouble if we were blocking those things, you know, if somebody wanted to make an issue out of it. You know, and it's not as simple. She's like, well, can we just move them over someplace else? And I said, I don't think you can just take a handicap spot, just make your own up. Uh, you know, there's got to be. Yeah, you can move. So anyway, she knows that. And, uh, yeah, it, and I think we're going to try to do the different trade yeah, We just can't do that. I just thought I'd tell you since we did come up with a bit of so you knew that I had talked to her and so I don't know but I haven't heard back from her after I heard that but on the tour that Hi there Hi Hi How are you? Well, yeah I change spots so people don't know where I'm at, you know? I like to so move around. Like, Is it even the mayor? Well, she, yeah, she wanted to be. I beat ran. <laughs> he beat me. Now I'm, yeah. This time, by 25 votes. Oh, 25 votes, oh, yeah. Don't even say that. <laughs> Next time. I was just so Thank you, thank you. I was just trying to hold on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No filter. How was your trip? Where'd you go? I forgot. Where'd you go? Did you go to Montana or someplace? Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, yeah. How was it? Was it, it was nice over there. Yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. I've never been. That was my I first haven't time. been. That's one area I haven't really oh, been. It's kind of in too. that. Yeah. 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 It's uh. Yeah. A lot of better. Lot of uh. Yeah, history. I gotta bring in my uh, copy of my DD two fourteen. I, I went down and uh, filled it in the state, so the state so they have it, and I thought it was going to, not the state, the city, not county, and I, I thought I was going to have to go down there, I, the, the cost of the meat, I opened up the thing, and uh, I had about eight or nine copies, <laughs> so on the 29th, I go down, fill up, fill up the final place, and I'd rather sit at the pool, drinking, and bar hop, that's about it. I'm going to a little bit longer to get a little bit more dexterity back in my hand. I'm going to see if I can fly. I do fly. Yeah, it's still fine. Yeah. And then if I can fly and control it, I'm going to get my pilot's license. I'm going to get a little bit more called uh, Irish Eye. Irish Eye. Yeah, they just found a house two days ago. Irish Eye Photography. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I've got a lot of uh, 35 million.
about it. She's had it for so many years, but it's one of the better ones. How much it cost? Okay, everybody. We're going to call the meeting, the regular meeting of the Tonino City Council for April 9th, 2024. I'm not like Wink. <laughs> I, mean, I was ready to be yeah, I mean, He just got you trained and now, he, now I switch up on you. Okay, uh, call the meeting to order for a April 9th, 2024, the regular meeting. Uh, make note that all council persons are here. Uh, Agenda approval. Uh, uh, flag huh? Oh, yeah, don't forget that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You got to miss me when my hearing is so much of me. <laughs> What's that? Okay, first item is approval of the agenda for tonight. So moved. It's been second. So it's been uh, moved and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Approval of the minutes for 3 26 2024. So moved. Second. It's been moved and then seconded to approve the meeting minutes for 326. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Consent calendar. The consent, consent calendar uh, from March 27th, 2024 through April 9th, 2024 consists of payroll ETFs in the amount of $57,837.88. Claims checks 32271 through 32292 in the amounts of $46,798.92 with claims checks 32269 and 32270 voided due to printer error for a grand total of $104,636.80 and there's no liquor or cannabis license at this time. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and then seconded to approve the consent calendar as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. The next item on the agenda is our proclamation. We have uh, a proclamation, and I'll read it out for no. everybody. Public comments. Oh, sorry. I'm really messed up tonight. Is there any public comments? I'm so excited to get to this presentation for volunteers. Today. Is there any public comments? Lots of people here. Okay, one more chance. No public comments? Okay, then we'll move on. We have a proclam proclamation uh, recognizing Volunteer Appreciation Month, and I will read our proclamation. By the City of Tonino, a proclamation, Volunteer Appreciation Month, April 2024. Whereas the month of April has been dedicated as National Volunteer Month to recognize the importance of volunteering and honoring the significant contributions volunteers make by generously donating their time and talents to worthy causes and whereas the month of April is an opportunity to salute the unparalleled services of volunteer contributions encompass, encompassing a broad range of needs across our community, including housing services, resource distribution, excuse me, community response services, and more. And whereas the dedicated volunteers of Tonino are an integral part of improving the quality of life of our most vulner, vulnerable residents by lending their time, skills, and energy to support various causes and Whereas volunteer participation is one of the most effective ways to make a positive impact in your community and citizens advisory boards, commissions, and committees are vital to good government. And whereas there are num numerous individuals, businesses, and organizations that serve the city of Tonino, and now therefore we, the council of the city of Tonino, hereby proclaim April 2024 as Volunteer Appreci Appreciation Month 
in Tonino encourage all citizens to honor volunteers for their countless contributions to our community and nation. Signed in the city of Tonino, Washington, this ninth day of April, 2024. So I will, I will start out by saying and give the other council members um, a minute. I appreciate the volunteers of this community. Uh, I told I went down to the food bank a couple mo uh, months ago when they were doing some work down there. And I, I really feel like volunteerism helps us bond. And we may have very different opinions on a lot of things, but when we come together to help people and do good things for our community, I think it brings us all, all together and lifts up our community as a whole. So I appreciate so much everybody's uh, work that they do in our community to help our citizens and make Tonino a great place to live. And just want to send out a thanks personally for me for the work that you all do in our communities. It's very much appreciated. I would like uh, a, a person from the group. I know there's a couple groups up in here. I'd like to, for them to get up and tell us what, you, what volunteer work you do. Got some beer. Yeah. Good. Have the yellow lights not on there? Can you push the push the button? There should be a light at the bottom there. And, and oh, there we go. Is that good? Yeah. Your name? All right, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, appreciate the time to be here, and it's uh, really uh, you know appreciate the recognition of the work we've done here. Uh, Many members of my organization are, uh, we have very deep roots in this county. Uh, myself, I spent the first part of my life in the Maytown area. I uh, grew up there, a uh, five generation homestead. I've lived you know, 20 years on the other side of Tenino. Uh, and actually, right in this corner of this house right here, I spent about two years uh, living <laughs> there. So I've got deep roots in this area. Uh, as somebody who uh, took in people, uh, you know, in my early years uh, from uh, family. I use the food bank myself, and it's been an honor to donate our time and resources, being able to bring uh, local small business together to, uh, to help uh, support that organization. I think it's amazing work uh, the Tanana Food Bank does for, for this area and uh, the people in need, especially in this day and age where just cost of living is astronomical and people are struggling more and more. Uh, thank you for this time. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really do. Thank you. <laughs> any other organizations here that want to say a word or I'd appreciate anybody so you get a little recognition personally? Come on up. Good evening. My name is Pam Light, and I am chair of the Splash Bash Committee. I would like to thank all the uh, people in the community that have volunteered their time to put this Splash Bash together to support our uh, quarry pool and um, uh, all, all the time that they have spent with donations and all the activities that we're having uh, this June 1st. And there are many of us, uh, many volunteers that aren't here that I'd like to thank. And um, we're going to have a splashing good time. And I hope everybody, <laughs> there are tickets available online now. And I'd love it if everybody would come and support our pool. Thank you so much. Thank you Thanks, for all the work you've done over the years. This, you know, this has been, since I've been on the council before yeah. this, uh, yeah. it's been multiple, multiple years that you've done this. And, uh, really is what allows us to run that pool because it's not definitely not a money maker for the city and, and the work that the volunteers do to help with that the is, community and the kids yeah and, and it's a it's a great draw not only for our community but even in a larger area people come here for that pool so very much appreciated Thank what you, you do thanks yeah. pam oh yeah of course i do i'll just start pointing out people now oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Bobby Bates. I'm the president of the Tenaya Youth Soccer, and I actually have parents that I've coached right on the board. Yes, yeah. that's three. <laughs> I am, we have a wonderful program, and we help the youth in this community, um, the sport of soccer, and um, I've been doing it for about 30 years in Tenaya. Um, You're not old enough to have done that. Yeah, it doesn't look like it is. Well, 
My, my son is old as Jason, so <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for a while. <laughs> so, and stuff, so it's a, it's a terrific program and we're always looking for field space and that's something that is a concern in, in Tonino um, to build our program. When I came back as president, I got the program to come back to home games and we were fed out in Tumwater as our home field. And so that has been something that it's been deep that we're trying to do. So um, you know. I would yeah. say, uh, well, first off, thank you. She was a coach of my kids yes. and uh, for many years. And uh, she's amazing, does amazing work. And all the volunteers with the soccer club and, and all the other clubs of baseball yeah. and it really is all volunteer work. So I appreciate it. Yeah. You might. Uh, have anybody that's interested to attend the park plan because part of that park plan in the longer term is soccer fields. So okay. come and make a comment and tell people how important that is for your organization so uh, it's recognized if, if somebody has time. Yeah, okay, we'll do. I mean, yeah. that's something, it, it's becoming a new expense, so yeah. yeah. Okay. And we're, part of the plan also is Thank baseball. You. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Who else is here? Do you have anything? Oh, here comes somebody. Hi. Um, my name is Haley Trestenreiter. I'm with Tanana Youth Fast Pitch. Um, this is our third year. Um, we went from our first year just having a single 10U um, team of 13 girls to our second year having a 8, 10, and 12U team of 32 girls. And now we have an 8U, two 10Us, and a 12 youth, so we have 53 girls this year. And so one, one softball is important. It's a spring sport. Um, we, in the past, haven't had as many girls playing softball, and so we're really trying to like build that back up for our community. Because like when I was in school, we had state placing softball teams, right? And part of it is accessibility. Um, prior to us, there were teams here and there that played in Tonino, but they had to travel so far, either mm -hmm. to practice or play. And so we're really focusing on bringing that sport here, um, making games more local, and making them accessible. And one thing that we do is we fundraise quite a bit. And we've been really blessed to have the Eagles be one of our bigger supporters, not only with just donations, but also giving us space to do our larger fundraisers. Um, we've also been very lucky to have the Lions Club and the VFW, which are also nonprofit organizations <laughs> that do a lot of supporting for us, as well as businesses in the community. So I just wanna, I know this is about volunteers, but there's also businesses that support us in what we want to do and we've just had a lot of support that we're all very very thankful for because like i said we went from 12 to 53 girls in three years right? <laughs> it's growing there's a need and we're able to subsidize a lot of costs for families as well as provide gear um, if any of you had baseball players or softball players you know that it can be a really expensive oh, yeah. sport <laughs> yep and so we're just we're we're just very very lucky to have such support in this community too so well, thank you we appreciate your thank organization you. and everything you do <laughs> well, <it's your> <laughs> gonna get you up here one way or another and then debbie and then debbie okay i'm uh forrest bergen i'm president of the Stino eagles and um we're a non-profit organization uh, c8 is it with membership non-profit with membership but uh, we basically try to bring in, uh, you know, like the youth softball group because we have a kitchen and, and facilities to feed people and, and whatnot. So they make the money off the kitchen and then we'll make our money off the bar. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it works out and we bring in entertainment. So if somebody wants to do something in our kitchen, like, oh, hey, we'll bring in a band. So it's a little more draw and whatnot. And uh, it seems to work out pretty good. Um, we donate to choose choose for love or choose love, choose love choose raise love. yeah raise for rowan uh youth soccer the youth softball we got scholarships at the high school and food stuff bank. and food bank yep um yeah we do sports yeah high school sports and team dinners and just it's kind of a 
pretty crazy place. It's all ran by volunteers. It's like a legitimate business, yeah. but it's all ran by volunteers. So you know, our meetings can get kind of crazy because people see have different ideas and want to go different down different roads and stuff, and you got to kind of yeah. funnel that in. But uh, for the most part, yeah, we're as open uh, to the public per se. You know, you must be a member, or signed in guest to make use of the bar, but we try to open it up for the community for people to come and use the kitchen and raise money and um, do things like that. So the Tenino, uh Chamber of Area Chamber of Commerce holds their Christmas auction yep, there yep, every year. Yep. I think about six years we've been doing it. <laughs> yeah, and that's pretty successful. Yeah. That's one of our more successful yeah. events. And then. Uh, I don't know how much money we raised uh, that lot. place for. Over the years. <laughs> I'm trying to keep track of it, but it's it's yeah. pretty crazy how much money we yeah. And you've been doing it ever since I've lived in this town, practically. You know, yeah, all my I've, kids have been going there and doing things there yeah, for their yeah. whole and high school career. So. We are trying to make it more kid-friendly, of course, you know. So, um, yeah, if anybody has any youth organizations or uh, wants to raise money or use our kitchen, we don't charge anything for it. We want you there. and. And it keeps us busy and stuff, and it generates income for us too. So, Good. yeah, I guess that's it. Thank well, thank you again for all the work you do. Any joke or something? Hi, I'm Joyce Worrell. I'm the vice president of the Tenino Area Chamber of Commerce and associated with all kinds of other things too. But um, I want to impress upon the people what has happened with our Chamber of Tenino Area Chamber of Commerce over the last 15 years. We have, uh, we have just grown so much that we now are able to give out compensations for some of the activities that happen in Tenino and, and help finance those things. And we're very proud of that. And uh, because of the, I'll say complaints. Linda will frown at this. The complaint, <laughs> the complaints that I that I come to the city council with sometimes. Many things have happened. We have our street sweeper now, uh, which makes me happy when I see it going down the streets, because. T People don't realize that the, t the, the business and occupation taxes that are spent in our local businesses here stay in our community and they help support our community. They, you're, when you spend at Costco or any place else, those go to Olympia or, or wherever, but our money stays here in the city to help improve things. And we, um, the chamber has grown so much now that people are coming into my store and saying, is there a place that I can start a business? I want to start a business in Tenino. People are searching and really wanting to come into our area and be a part of our community because it is growing so much. So I'm, I'm really thankful for that. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a great um, journey. Huh? It's been a great journey. A, you're right, Linda, a great journey over the years. I also am a member of the South Thurston Economic Development Initiative Commission, and that's called STEADY, and that started years ago, and I was at the beginning of that when all of the communities from Rochester through Yelm got together to make South Thurston carry, uh, South Thurston an area where people would come to and do things. And I can't believe the difference that has made in our community and the people that come into our community and do business here and participate and enjoy the South Thurston County, things that we have to offer. And part of that came about as the Ag Ag Agriculture Park was started through um, the South Thurston uh, count, e can, S, steady, S-T-E-D-I, and I was at the very first meeting when all of, when a lot of the farmers and people got together to talk about how can we bring local commerce in and local businesses come in to, um, 
to, to process their products so that they can, get it, they can get out to the community. And so that now we have the Ag Park coming. If you don't know anything about it, you need to go online and learn about it. It's a fabulous, fabulous thing that's happening here in our community. So I, I'm just grateful that I'm able to be a part of, even though I don't live here, to be a part of the Tenino area community and as a business. And I thank you all for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Come on, Deb. Hi, everyone. My name is Deb Reicheldurfer, and I volunteer in a lot of community uh, coalitions, I guess, in the area. Um, most recently, I'm involved with the Bucota Tenino Healthy Action Team. Um, I'm the past uh, chair of the Tenino Band Boosters. And I really would like to thank um, the present administration that's doing the band boosters now that have come in behind me um, because I wasn't, I couldn't let it go. It was dear to my heart. And I have a great group of volunteers who are not here tonight, but I would sure love to call them out. <laughs> you know, Angela Salisbury and Christy Burke, you know, they're really big in the community here. And I'd like to give them a big shout out for taking over the band boosters and uh, seeing that that legacy carries on. Um, other things I'm doing right now is uh, Friends at Tenino Park. So we have uh, the Earth Day cleanup coming up on the 24th. And I encourage everybody who doesn't have anything better to do on the 24th to come out to Tenino Park and help us do some, some cleanup and uh, get the park all spruced up and ready for the summer season. Yes. Um, that's it. Thank you for inviting us all tonight. Well, I, I appreciate, really appreciate all that you yeah. you've done. My name is Jenny Hall, and I'm actually not a Tenino resident, but I love Tenino and wish I was a resident here. <laughs> We've got some um, real estate people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I volunteer with Tenino Arts. Uh, Donna Mayo Taylor and Jennifer Ferguson and I have um, been putting on some artisan markets in Tenino and trying to bring um, just that art component. And we've, with partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, um, we've been able to put on the holiday markets and the spring markets. And we're getting ready to launch our creative market, which is a street fair right in front of uh, um, the Stone Carvers area. So that'll be second Saturdays, um, June through September. And we've got a couple fun themes planned for that. So we're trying some new things. Um, so I just, that's, that's, the arts is where my heart is, and Tenino has allowed me to express that part of myself. So I really appreciate that. Um, the other hat that I wear is with the Tenino Young at Heart Theater, and the community theater has been in Tenino for over 30 years, performing summer musicals at the high school. And this summer, uh, once again, um, it's Rogers and Hammer Hammerstein's um, State Fair is the musical. Audition, I have audition Ooh. information. Um, auditions will be May, th I think it's third and fourth. But community theater is about the community. It's open auditions to all ages, all abilities. We just want people to come and join the family and participate. We will find a you know, a place in the show, whether it's, you know, a main, a main role or it could be just running a flag across the stage. It's, we invite everyone to participate. Um, and so we do uh, murder mysteries and readers theaters, but the main thing is the, uh, the show in the summertime. And so that's the last two weekends in July. And they're always good. Yes. I've been yes. to several. Yes. I enjoyed every one of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I appreciate Tenino a lot. We appreciate <laughs> what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of the fire department people, anybody want to come up and tell us a little bit about what you do? My name is. Jennifer Johnson. I volunteer with the Tenino Fire Department. Mm -hmm. And I've been working there a couple years now. Um, I will say it's a great honor for me to be a part of the community. I think the citizens in this community do more for me than you know I actually do for them. But um, it's been a great honor for me to serve here. 
And um, some things that we do, uh, we do put on the crab feed. Um, we've taken needy families to like shop for Christmas presents during the holidays and things like that. Um, I'm truly grateful to be a part of the fire department and this community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We miss anybody? Can I catch everybody? Well, once again, your work, everybody's work is greatly appreciated. I want to also give a shout out. We mentioned it, but the Tonino Food Bank, what they do with mostly volunteers is another amazing thing that happens in this community. I was telling somebody today, uh, I was just down talking to Jody Stoltz, who kind of heads it up, and they're serving 90 to 100 families every week with food in our community. And without them, it, people would be struggling. You know, there'd be a lot of people struggling. So they really play a critical role in our community too. Uh, and a lot of them are kids. You know, unfortunately, a lot of them are kids. Uh, so a shout out to them and what they do and all the people that help support that organization because they, they live on grants and uh, support from people in our community. So uh, yeah, very much appreciated. Yeah. Anybody else have any you want to comments or anything? All good? Okay. Well, I'd, I'd like to say what, what I hear here is, is amazing. Um, it's just the breadth yeah. of participation. We've got social services. We've got the, the, the arts, the cultural aspect of this. We have people doing sports for the kids. Um, public services, the, the fire, you know, it's, it, there's so many ways that people do and can volunteer in our community to make it a, a better place and, and make it, so it is a community, not just a city where we all live, but through the volunteering, we're working and meeting and interacting with our fellows here in the city. And there's so much to be said for that. Uh, that, that you know, you're not just helping other people; you're helping yourself because we all need. <laughs> pardon me here, but you know, we all need people. We all need to be connected. We're social creatures, and if you're, you know, feeling isolated from you know the internet or or being alone, step out. There are so many organizations here that could use your help, things. and. It all counts. It doesn't matter what you do, it all counts. And it's important to me to, <laughs> this is terrible. Um, it's important to me to, to see you all here and to recognize the, the efforts you do and it's all worthy, you are all worthy. Thank you very much. Not to, not, not to have to have the last word, but I think, too, we should recognize there's a lot of people that just kind of do things on their own that may not be part of a group or anything. You know, we have people that are here picking up garbage along the road. They just go out on a day that they have some time. And so it's not just groups. It's just individuals can make a difference just on their own by just doing some little simple thing that you can, you can do to make a difference in our community. So Absolutely. Um, Checking on the neighbor, you yep. know, to, to see how they're doing, giving someone a ride to the hospital. There's so many ways we help each other. It doesn't get recognized, and we just do it. Yep. Just do it. Okay. Before we can all start crying, talk. No, I'll do it. Yes. Yes, it is. I know. I'm not. I'm, did you? Just want to thank you for the confirmation. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, so now we'll go on to the rest of our business. We just have a couple things. Uh, if you want to step out, you're more than welcome to, but we'll be just about 10 more minutes probably. But feel free to step out if you want to. You've been here for a while. Oh, I think they should stay. Thanks again, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you. What is UMF? I was going to ask him what UMF stands for. Okay. You think UMF? Okay. We got to get back. Yeah.
<laughs> okay, back to old business. Number eight, uh, reappointment of Civil Service Commissioner Jody Stoltz, who we just mentioned earlier. She is also. Okay, well, you know, I should have I should just kept everybody here huh? <laughs> for five more minutes. Uh, Move approval. Good, good. So, uh, well, wait a minute, I want to ask you a question. Ask me anything you want. What? Except for what UMF stands for. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask you. I'll let you know later. Yeah, tell me later. They, they obviously know. Okay, bye. I'll leave. You can figure out the rest. All right, thank you. Okay. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. All right, let's uh, get going. <laughs> uh, Jody Stoltz is our current civil service commissioner. Her appointment is time is coming up. So we are asking to, uh, she has agreed to continue in that position. So we're asking for a motion to reappoint Jody Stoltz as I a made civil the motion. service commissioner. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, reappoint civil service commissioner Jody Stoltz. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, change, I don't know if I gave that change order to change somebody. Or, back to me. Oh, sorry. Okay. Here. Uh, so there's a change order on the quarry pool. This is a good one. We're paying less in taxes, and, but we, need, we needed to make that correction. So the change is uh, the sales tax is reduced $4,370.45. Yeah. So that's good for once to have actual yeah. reduction versus a uh, add on. Tax return. I yeah. really good that. I could, I could use that to pay my tax bill. What did yeah. they what did they charge us the tax in their area? Is that what they did instead of the one for ten items? I don't know. I thought it was I don't know if it says on here what uh for supplement. It be right here, sir. Oh, I was just trying to see why where how the change I got the, the change order, but what happened if they just put the wrong amount in or I don't know. It doesn't Probably. say on this paperwork. Check. I was just curious. Increase the contract time and decrease contract amount to reconcile final oh. values, including the higher sales tax rate. Oh. So How it didn't it? lower it. Well, it says, uh, oh, is that an increase of 4,000 then? I can't I believe guess. so. I thought it was a little, the symbol was a decrease. <laughs> well, that It looks like a decrease. So. Sorry, I got us all so excited much. thinking we're, uh, yeah. <laughs> getting some money back, but it's actually increase in sale tax of $4,370.45. So we're asking for a motion to approve that. Uh, so, so moved. Correction. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the change order for the uh, quarry pool, increasing the contract time and decreasing the amount uh, to reconcile final values and include a higher sales tax rate. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Let's see. Did we do a motion to approve the proclamation? Did no. we? After all that? I want to go back and do that. Thank you. So going back to the proclamation, I guess we should approve it since we did all that work. No approval. Uh, second. It's been approved and seconded to uh, approve the proclama proclamation of Volunteer Appreciation Month. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, it passes. Thanks everybody again. Comment period number two. Is there anybody that would like to make comment to, to the public? No comments? Announcements? Any announcements? I think we had several about events coming up. But Did we set a time for a finance committee meeting? Uh, let's wait to see. I'll get with you guys and uh, we'll what? figure out a day. Just, I'm not going to be here. I'll, I'll, I'll be back on the 22nd. Of the okay. I'll talk to Jen and we'll figure out if we okay. want to do something, try to do something before the 22nd or after you get back. Okay. We'll, we'll figure it out and get and okay. talk to you guys. No other first, announcements? First responders potluck uh, will be held over at the school where we originally started, over at the middle school. It'll be September 14th from noon to 3. Not in the park, huh? No. Okay. Okay, if there's no other announcements, uh, we're adjourned. Yay. Not a dateable motion. Take that. Thank I'm you. I'm going to get used to that. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you.